systematic approach on how to actually approach acid-based questions on your exam. Okay. When you're talking about an acid-based question, let's understand the structure first, right? Mm -hmm. When you're given an acid-based question, they typically give you the pH, they give you the PCO2, they give you the PO2, and they give you the bicarb. Those mm -hmm. are even clinically what you get. Now, mm -hmm. the other thing that you may get are going to be a set of electrolytes, right? They're going to give you your sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarb, BUN, creatinine, glucose, calcium, and FOB, right? Subsequently, they're also going to be giving you some sample vignette about um, what the patient's symptoms are. And that will definitely be important when we talk about an anion gap metabolic acidosis and the different mm -hmm. cultures you have. So if this is the information you're given, then when you're talking about your exam questions, you have to figure out, all right, what is going to be the most important strategy? And my three-step strategy is the following. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at this right here, the pH. And when I look at the pH, I ask myself, what is the primary disturbance? So define or what is the primary disturbance? Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you know, if you are typically less than 7.35, you're going to be acidosis. Mm -hmm. And if you're greater than 7.45, you're going to be alkalosis. Mm -hmm. And we use this surrogate, especially for ABGs, we use this number of 7.4 as kind of our middle ground, that under 7.4 acidosis, over 7.4 alkalosis, mm -hmm. right? And so then the second step is actually a pretty funny step. And that step asks the question, if I were in a court of law, what supports my primary disturbance? So if I were in a court of law, what supports my primary acidosis or alkalosis? That's the important question. So in order to understand the second step of the strategy, you have to go um, back to the basic science of what acidosis is. And acidosis usually is going to be defined by H plus concentration. But we talk about H plus concentrations in two ways, right? We talk about it based on CO2, and we talk about H plus concentrations based on bicarb. And this all relates to the carbonic anhydrase equation, but you don't necessarily need to know that um, as well to answer acid-based questions. Mm -hmm. What you do need to know, though, is when you have elevations in CO2, that is going to be acidosis. Mm -hmm. And then when you have decreases in CO2, that's going to be alkalosis because you have, in effect, you have less amounts of this H+. Mm -hmm. Similarly with bicarb, if you have elevated amounts of bicarb, mm -hmm. you are going to have an alkalosis. Okay? And then if you have low levels of bicarb, you're going to have an acidosis. Okay? So now this definitely makes sense because what you're, what you're doing is you're going into the court of law and you're saying, all right, well, your honor, my acidosis is going to be best supported by mm -hmm. either a high CO2, because that supports an acidosis, mm -hmm. or a low bicarb. Mm -hmm. And both of these support acidosis. But in the case of if CO2 is elevated, that acidosis is known as a respiratory acidosis. Mm -hmm. And then if you're talking about a low bicarb, that acidosis is going to be known as a metabolic acidosis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Similarly, when you're talking about an alkalosis, you're going to be thinking of the following. You're going to say, your honor, my alkalosis is best going to be supported by a low CO2 or an elevated bicarb. Right? Because that is, those are two supporting theories of an alkalosis. So if a low CO2 is going to give you an alkalosis, that's called respiratory. And if an elevated bicarb is going to be um, related to an alkalosis, that's going to be a metabolic. Mm -hmm. And so then comes the third step. And the third step is going to actually try to decipher what is going to be the compensation. That's mm -hmm. the third step is what is the compensation? Now, when you're talking about the compensation for an acidosis or alkalosis, I like to ask the question, think of the organ. 
think of the organ. So what that means is that when you're talking about an acidosis, an acidosis is going to be either respiratory or metabolic. And that acidosis, if it's a respiratory acidosis, you're going to have a kidney compensation. Mm -hmm. If you have a metabolic acidosis, your lung is going to be compensating. Mm -hmm. So I always like to think of it from an organ perspective. So let's kind of go through a quick little example on this, right? Mm -hmm. So say that I have an acidosis and on my ABG, it is an elevated CO2. So mm -hmm. in a I have an elevated CO2 with an acidosis. What is that called? Respiratory acidosis. Then I come down to my compensation. What organ in a respiratory acidosis is going to be compensating? The kidney is the compensation, right? Because the primary disturbance is a respiratory acidosis. So your lung is messed up. Then the organ that helps you compensate is a kidney. Oh, it's a kidney, okay. Okay, so it's opposite essentially. There you have it, acid base. Step one, primary disturbance. Step two, what supports your primary disturbance? Step three, what's the compensation? Hope you find value in this video and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. More content coming to you. Thanks for watching.